There's no doubt Excel user forms are pretty cool, but validating entries in user forms, making sure the data is getting into the spreadsheet in the right way and the right form can be a nightmare. In this video, I'm gonna show you how I use Excel VBA to validate entries going from a user form into a spreadsheet. Let's get into it. So let's get into the download file and let's work out how to do this one. So go ahead, click add, and let's just remind ourselves what our user form looks like and what we want to do. I want to put validation on the first name, surname, age, and exercise status cells to ensure that we have an entry in those cells, to ensure they're not blank. Now, on this file, head over to the engine sheet. What you're gonna notice is we have some text in this area. Now, what is this text for? Well, here I'm telling Excel what user form controls, so what things on that user form I want to include in this validation exercise. And if you go into the VBA editor, you can also go developer and Visual Basic, of course, to get into the VBA editor. We'll be able to remind ourselves what the names of these controls are. So the first name box is called text first. The surname box is called text surname. So I've taken those names and actually written them in the worksheet. And as we're going to see in a second, this is going to help us locate which controls we want to work with in the user form. So let's go ahead, try to create the code into the VBA editor. You can hit the F7 key. At this point, it's gonna take you into the code for the user form. Just clear out any code we don't need. This always happens with user forms, doesn't it? So firstly, we want to understand what happens when we hit that command button. Back to the user form briefly here. If we double click on this continue button, what happens? This is where we want our validation mechanism to go. So currently, we're going to this transfer data routine. And I can see this transfer data routine here. That's not quite what we want to do. We're gonna create a separate routine to do this validation, separate from the transfer data routine, because we want to modulate code where we can have lots of small routines rather than just a few very long routines. We can easily get in trouble with those. So let's say sub check underscore blanks here. So an informative name for the macro. Then what do we want to do? Well, we want Excel to loop through these entries and then to do some kind of validation exercise. So first we need a mechanism to loop through these entries. I'm gonna do that using a range variable. So the famous Chris cell as range, and then for each of this variable name, Chris cell in sheets engine dot range. Now what I should have said is I gave this range a range name. So to do that, just select range, and then you can click uh, in the name box in the top left, enter the name and click enter. Alternatively, you can go formulas, name manager, and new name to create this name, but it just makes interaction with the VBA editor slightly easier to be able to reference that named range rather than using normal cell references. So being careful with the syntax now, check underscore range and close the speech marks. And then what do we do when we open a loop? Always make sure we close a loop so that we don't get in trouble later. And this is a for next loop. So I can say next and then the variable name. And this is our basic structure. And this is just gonna loop through these entries. And by the way, you could use a dynamic name here uh, so that if you wanted to add other entries to this list, to this list, you'll be able to do that. That's how I'll do it on a real world project. But for this, for this video, a named range is absolutely fine. So what do we want to do with each cell? Well, we're going to need a conditional statement, and we're going to say if data uf, which is of course the name of the user form, I can see that in the project explorer dot controls. And a control is kind of a, a weird name, isn't it? But a control is anything on the user form. So the text box, the button, the option buttons, whatever you might have on the user form, they're all called controls. So we can access the control uh, collection in this way. Then we want to say Chris cell dot value like this. So what's going to happen now? Well, what's in the cell? Excel is going to go and see what's in the cell and the contents of the cell. It's going to try to find a control with that name. So it's gonna look for a control called text first. So assuming our spelling is accurate, I hope it is, this is gonna work for us. So we can then say, if the value of the control is blank, is nothing, 
then we want to do something. And once again, just like when we open a loop, we close it. When we open a conditional statement, make sure you close it too. And for additional credit, do that indentation. That always helps us to understand the syntax more easily. So we've got to a situation where we do have a blank value in one of the text boxes. So what do we want to happen there? We definitely want to notify the user here. So message box, uh, let's say make sure all entries, let's say all text boxes have entries, something like that. And you know, and you can improve this message box and you could even put in a control to point out which text box is problematic. That would be really nice as well. So notify the user and then hit exit sub there. Now there's one more thing we absolutely have to remember to do. Remember when we click that continue button, what code is running? Well, at the moment we're running this transfer data code. So we don't want transfer data to run, do we? We want to actually check the blanks now. So how can we change that? So we change this to check blanks. Once again, being 100% accurate, hopefully, uh, with the syntax. And then how do we get to the transfer data routine? Because this routine is the routine that's making all the magic happen, of course. Well, we can do that by calling it from our validation routine. We can now say call transfer data. And I can see it's pretty nice how more, more fortuitously than by design, how the macros have lined up in the VBA editor. So Excel is going to go through the validation routine and then go on to transfer data only if it hasn't exited the validation routine during the validation exercise. So let's see if this has all come together. I'm fully expecting some errors, but let's see how we do. So we're going to hit add now. We've got our user form. So we want to avoid this situation where someone just hits continue now. Clearly, we've got a few blanks. So we'd want Excel to point that out. And Excel has, does, has done. Make sure all text box have entries. That's pretty cool. And one thing I like about this is it leaves the user form open for the user to continue data entry to improve things. It doesn't close the user form, which might be annoying. So let's go ahead. Let's do entry in two cells. So remember, we're, che we're checking four text boxes. So what are we looking to happen now? We want Excel to say again, yeah, make sure the text has entries. Let's go ahead and the text boxes have entries rather. Let's go ahead and continue this. Yes, for exercise. So now we've got to a situation where everything looks okay. Everything looks complete. So if I hit continue now, I'm looking for my entry to appear right here in our little data set. Let's see what happens. Hit continue and I can see there the entry has been added to the database. Now, if you're not sure what you need to know in Excel these days, and let's face it, there's so much information out there at the moment, you are going to love my Excel cheat sheet. I have boiled it down into the exact techniques and formally you need to know on a single page PDF. Absolutely free. Download link below this video.